Nicki Minaj once stated on Instagram, it's a great time to be a white rapper in America, huh? She wrote, posting a screenshot of the top 10. These are the top 10 rap songs on US iTunes. Who were the rappers that the hip hop queen was referring to? Eminem, Post Malone, Macklemore, g Easy, and Machine Gun Kelly were all on the list. She went on to say that Eminem and Post Malone were two of her favorite out of those artists. But Nicki Minaj brought the truth to light. White rappers were oddly enough dominating the charts in a historically black art form. This mirrors when the once predominantly African American genre of rock and roll, pioneered by Little Richie himself, Fats Domino, Chuck Berry, Bo Diddley, and Sister Rosetta Tharp, suddenly say Elvis Presley, who emerged after all of these artists, get called the king of rock and roll. It is not that Nicki Minaj is saying she hates white rappers. She is speaking more to this history of African Americans creating things and then having them capitalized on and essentially owned by white artists, watching the black artists fade right into the background. This leads us to some of the fearful and angry feelings that lead to why white rappers are usually hated. That hate doesn't just come from black and brown audiences. Even white people that have had first-hand experience with hip-hop culture often view the massive amount of new white rappers with a skeptical frown. What makes people so leery of accepting white rappers? Typically, it stems from them not having been co-signed by respected hip-hop legends or proving that they have a commitment to the culture outside of just looking to make money off of it. Look at Eminem for instance. Regardless of if you like his music or not, he is generally perceived as the most respected white hip-hop artist ever. He emerged in the 1990s, not the insta-rapper age of being able to pop up out of nowhere with songs online and calling yourself a rapper the same day. Eminem actually grew up battling rappers face to face, showing and proving his skills live at open mic contests at Detroit's famed rapper hub, The Hip Hop Shop, that was often hosted by his friend Proof. Even though M was dead broke, he managed to put out an independent album called Infinite years before he became famous. In fact, it was when he came in at second place in the 1997 Rap Olympics battle in Los Angeles that his demo managed to make its way to Dr. Dre, who not only put the stamp of approval on Slim Shady, the low-income trailer park survivor, but signed him and made Eminem the legend he is today. Dr. Dre's respect from being a member of NWA and bringing Snoop Dogg to the forefront gave Eminem all the credibility that he could possibly ask for. In a similar fashion, when House of Pain came out in 1992 with their debut album Fine Malt Lyrics and mega hit Jump Around, they owned who they were and made gaining and giving respect to hip hop a priority. House of Pain totally represented their working class Irish backgrounds, largely avoiding white rapper hate in the process. Like Eminem, Everlast had been previously co-signed by another Los Angeles rap icon, Ice-T, who put out Everlast's previous solo album, Forever Everlasting. House of Pain also received production and guest appearances over the years from highly regarded hip-hop purists like Cypress Hill, Pete Rock, Guru from Gangstar, Diamond D, and Sadat X. All who would have never worked with House of Pain if they were corny frauds who would have polluted their image. But when you're a white rapper like Bad Baby who literally becomes famous for disrespecting her mother on the Dr. Phil talk show and having her threats to the studio audience get transformed into video memes leading to a record deal with Atlantic Records, the hate isn't going to be too far away. Bad Baby was manufactured as a star off of this one viral moment online and she was never even a rapper prior to that. Having her image, her lyrics, and her whole career handed to her in the blink of an eye makes many believe that she got there because she's white. Iggy Azalea, another often hated white rapper, comes to us from Australia, which is perfectly fine because, well, hip hop is now global. But her problem came from rapping with a practiced Southern African American accent like she was raised in Atlanta. When criticized for cultural appropriation, Iggy expressed her reasons by saying this, I lived in the South for five years. You pick up things from your surroundings and teachers. The people who taught me to rap are all from the South, and so was the music I had listened to as a teen. Many black hip hop artists have spoken out against their perceived cultural appropriation and disregard for African American stereotypes. The legend Q-Tip from A Tribe Called Quest felt the need to provide Iggy with an extensive history of hip hop culture and its roots via Twitter. 
Rodiga said, Don't come to America and try to convince me that you're gangsta, boo. Personally, I don't consider Iggy hip-hop. I listen to her album. Everything that I hear on there is everything but that. And I feel like hip-hop is hip-hop. Talib Kweli also addressed Iggy by saying this, the fact that Iggy Azalea thinks Macklemore's song was a diss to her instead of actually listening is proof of her privilege. F*** Iggy Azalea. Lil Dicky, the jokey, middle-class white rapper from Pennsylvania, has never really been taken serious. Many people aren't sure if he's just a real-life version of the goofy, wannabe rapper from the movie Malibu's Most Wanted. As much as Lil Dicky may want to be looked at as a respected, dedicated rapper, he didn't help his cause very much when he made this statement. I started rapping simply to get attention comedically, so I could write movies, write TV shows, and act. I had very little interest in being a rapper. I fell in love with rapping though, so I'm not leaving that game until I've proven my point. However, I plan on having two concurrent careers going on at the same time, as a rapper and as a comedian, actor, writer. I value the non-musical career just as much as the rap career, and I can't wait to begin acting on that. Coming across as genuine and authentic to who you really are is not only important to be respected as a hip-hop artist that is black, but especially as one that happens to be white. Macklemore may have received hate for his pop rap music success, but he is also respected by the same Talib Kweli that called out Iggy Azalea. Because Macklemore spoke honestly about his own white privilege and his music. The same reason why Third Base got respect as sincere rappers at a Caucasian persuasion back in 1980s and the early 1990s. It was because they were also not afraid to address the ugly outcomes of white supremacy that they have witnessed and even benefited from. Group member MC Surge addressed racist stereotypes about black being considered evil way back in 1989 on their hit song Gas Face with lyrics like, black cat is bad luck, bad guys wear black, it must have been a white guy that started all that. Speaking of third base, they even used the music video for their biggest hit song Pop Goes the Weasel to mock Vanilla Ice, who they felt was a fraudulent mainstream commercial white rapper who was in it for the money and not to help hip hop culture flourish at all. Vanilla Ice was one of the highest selling rappers in the early 1990s, which gave rise to many fly-by-night white rappers like Marky Mark, who became the massive actor Mark Wahlberg much later on, Chill T, who was the son of billionaire Nike founder Phil Knight, actor Beverly Hills 90210 actor Brian Austin Green, and Tom Hanks' son Chet Hayes. This continued the distrust of white rappers, writing them off as having selfish intentions and no regard for the art form. But then, during the late 1990s and early 2000s, there was a surge of white rappers in the underground indie rap circuit that could care less about mainstream pop appeal and wore their love of hip hop on their sleeves, often releasing their records on indie labels like Rockus, Fondalum, Def Jux, Baby Grande, and Eastern Conference. LP, now known as one half of Run the Jewels with Killer Mike, had a crew called Company Flow on Raucous Records. Others included Cage, Vinnie Paz, La Coca Nostra, Nonfixion, and Necro. Other white rappers that have gained respect for being who they are and subscribing to hip hop culture in a pure manner include Action Bronson from Queens and the deceased Mac Miller from Pittsburgh, your old Droog from Brooklyn, and R.A. the Rugged Man from Long Island. What do all four of these white rappers have in common? Well, they all placed a premium amount of effort and talent into writing their own rhymes and being extremely clever with their wordplay. White rappers using the n-word just because they happen to rap never turns out well. Look what happened to Krayshawn when her white girl mob partner V Nasty foolishly thought she geographically earned the right to say it just because she grew up around black people. Their careers disappeared almost instantly. Even Post Malone, currently the most streamed artist in the world, had to publicly apologize when a video popped up online of him dropping the N-bomb while watching TV with a friend. Mac Miller, R.A. The Rugged Man, Bubba Sparks also recognized the importance of standing out on their own and not copying others, and not turning themselves into the most ignorant black stereotypes possible in order to grab attention. Sounding distinctly original was what happened with the Beastie Boys when they broke through with their platinum selling debut album, License to Ill, back in 1986, merging their punk rock roots with their hip hop lifestyle. From Paul Wall to Machine Gun Kelly, there's clearly no shortage of white rappers. Maybe the best thing for them to do is follow what the respected ones have done and take hip hop seriously as a culture instead of an overnight business plan. 
This has been a Hip Hop Madness original. Make sure to stay tuned and stay up to date with everything we got going on by hitting that subscribe button and notification bell. Oh, and don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Hip Hop Madness and join the movement.